As EVA 83 begins, EV1, Frank Rubio in the red stripes, will egress the airlock first, followed by EV2, Josh Cassida in the white stripes. EV1 will retrieve a crew lock bag, and then both crew members will translate out to a location on the truss to set up their tethers. EV1 will retrieve a second bag left outside after the last EVA, bundle it to his crew lock bag, and translate out to the P4 worksite. Both bags will be stowed at that worksite. The cable bag gets stowed on the electronics platform, and the crew lock bag gets stowed on the left mod kit strut. EV1 will retrieve a handling aid, known as a scoop, and install that on the mounting bracket before heading back down to the cable bag to retrieve the IROSA cables. EV1 will work to pre-position these cables, one bundle on the right side and one on the left in preparation for later connection. Meanwhile, EV2 will head to the IROSA carrier to prepare the lower IROSA for removal. EV2 will release two anti-rotation devices from the carrier. These devices secure the primary restraint bolts during the high vibration loads seen during launch. EV2 will then translate to the zenith side to access two sets of bolts on the boom end of the IROSA. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place, later helping the arrays during deployment. The second two bolts will release two of the four mechanisms holding the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. EV2 will translate off the carrier and over to where the robotic arm is waiting. On the last EVA, a foot restraint was installed on the end of the robotic arm. EV2 will use that same foot restraint to fly over to the lower IROSA and remove it from the carrier. The foot restraint provides a stable platform to allow the IROSA to be carried by a crew member to the mod kit installation location. Once complete at the mod kit, EV1 translates inboard and continues preparing the IROSA for removal from the carrier. EV1 will then partially release the primary restraint bolts and install the first of two scoops onto the IROSA. EV2 will arrive on the robotic arm at the IROSA release position, and both crew members will work together to release the final bolt holding IROSA to the carrier, install a second scoop, and then lift IROSA off of the carrier. After several maneuvers on the robotic arm, EV2 will arrive at the mod kit worksite. During these maneuvers, EV1 will reconfigure EV2's safety tether and meet EV2 out at the mod kit. Both crew will work together to install the IROSA onto the mounting bracket. The crew will remove the scoops and EV2 will move into position to release the final bolt holding the IROSA in its folded position. Once released, EV1 will hold IROSA closed while EV2 egresses the foot restraint and gets into position. Both crew will then work together to unfold IROSA and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Once secure, EV2 will drive two hinge bolts that hold the IROSA in the unfolded position and move away from the IROSA to reconfigure their safety tethers. EV1 will then drive eight bolts to fully secure the IROSA to the mounting bracket. Both crew will then work to electrically connect the new IROSA to the ISS power system using the cables that EV1 positioned earlier. They'll first attach four connectors to IROSA, then move to either side of the legacy array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable that allows power to flow from both the new IROSA and the legacy array. At this point, EV1 will move to a deployment viewing position and EV2 will release the final two bolts restraining IROSA in the undeployed position. IROSA will deploy over the next six to 10 minutes and once complete, EV2 will release two bolts that allow the IROSA blankets to become tensioned. The crew will begin working to clean up their bags at this worksite, with EV1 bringing the two bags back inboard. EV2 will remove the foot restraint from the robotic arm and return it to its stowage location. Both crew will then head to the carrier and perform some final reconfiguration of the upper IROSA stowage beams, securing them in place for final disposal of the carrier.
The crew will then retrieve the remaining bags and will translate back to the airlock to clean up their tethers, ingress, and begin repressing the airlock. 